Hi, my name is Emma Foley and I'm a software engineer at Intel Shannon. Um, today we're going to present Nyaki and Collect-D and show how they can be used for, fault, for faster fault detection and maintenance. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Julian. I uh, work at Red for a few years now and I'm uh, part of the telemetry team there and um, also in OpenStack. So I've been doing telemetry for five years now. That's a pretty long time. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Neoki first and I'll introduce you a bit uh, about it. Uh, we'll see then what Collect is and how you can use it. Um, or you can plug these two software together to achieve amazing things. And uh, how we can improve all of this stack. So uh, first, I'd like to talk about a bit about Gnocchi. Uh, what is it uh, and what is its purpose? So it's an OpenStack project that has been created three years ago now. So I guess most of you have heard uh, at least a bit about it. Um, it left OpenStack officially a couple of months ago, but that doesn't make it uh, useless for that. It's just that it's now independent and developed outside of OpenStack, obviously, uh, of foolish. Um, it's the main backend for OpenStack Cinometer. So Cinometer used to store its data. It, it's in uh, its own database, and it now leverage uh, Nuki instead. So Nuki is a term server database uh, as a service. Uh, we use the term as a service here because it's one of these rare databases that offers an API that you can use to query it. So it, I mean, it started in the OpenStack ecosystem, so it makes sense to have an API, an HTTP REST API. Um, there's not a lot of time series these days exposing a nice, clear HTTP API in the spirit of what OpenStack provided so far for compute or other services. Uh, so I imagine most of you know what a time series is. Uh, it's basically a series of points uh, with a timestamp and a value. And what Nuki does is that it stores that, it stores that kind of data at a very large scale. So most of the database um, open source database for time series that we tried to use three years ago uh, were not really fitting in our different use cases for Cinometer and OpenStack. So we had to start a new project. At first, it wasn't like, like a real time series database. It, it was more a front end to over time series database, but it turned out that most of them were not working in the where we wanted them to work, so we ended up writing our own time series database uh, with the OpenStack toolsets and the OpenStack services in mind. So, uh, for example, you can use other OpenStack services such as Keystone for authentication or uh, Swift for storage, which is pretty handy. One of the uh, things that makes Nokia a bit different than the other uh, time series database is that it does pre-computed aggregation. So when you some metrics to uh, Nuki, it computes things like the average, minimum, the maximum, uh, the number of points you sent in advance uh, per period, and store them for a defined amount of time. So it's a bit different than what you will see in more uh, time series database that store every point with every degree of precision, for example. Here we try to aggregate in advance, so when you request things like uh, give me the samples, uh, the metrics of this for the last hour with a five minutes interval. It's already computed and it's pretty fast. There's nothing to be computed on demand. Everything is done beforehand. Uh, Nuki has a, an architecture that is a bit different than most of the other OpenStack projects you might encounter. Uh, it has three different storage pieces. Uh, um, the last one on the bottom is the indexer. So the indexer uh, does not store any metrics, but it stores the list of resources in your OpenStack cloud or any kind of other resources. It's not really tied to OpenStack. It could be over, I don't know, switches, uh, routers, networks, uh, whatever you want. It's pretty agnostic in this regard. And it stores that into a database. Uh, right now, there's only two drivers, which are uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL. But it's pretty easy to add any over database backend, if you prefer any other technology. Uh, the two other pieces of storage, which are usually the same, but that can be used in different ways, are the measure storage and the metric storage. So the measure storage is the incoming metric storage. So when you send new measures to Gnocchi, it stores them into that storage. 
So it could be Swift, Ceph, uh, Redis, uh, whatever you prefer, or even a file, a file in the file system. And the, this, uh, all of these new measures that you send are going to be computed and aggregated into a time series, and that's done by the metric dig worker that is uh, in green there. And this metric dig worker is going to compute all the average, the minimum, the maximum of all the points that you send, and is going to archive them into a metric storage. This is usually a largely scalable and with a lot of space uh, system, such as a Ceph cluster or a Swift installation or a big uh, uh, filer or whatever uh, you have to use as that. Uh, the way to interact with Gnocchi is through an API, like I said. Uh, the API is stateless uh, since it's a REST API, so it's pretty easy to um, scale, the, scale it out. You, you can have any number of workers. The same goes for the metric D workers. So the more metrics you send to Gnocchi, the more measure you have, the more workload you send to it, uh, is going to need to scale. And uh, the metric D workers are also stateless, so you can spawn as much as, as you need to have your own metrics computed in real time or with some delay if you have cheap hardware. Um, everything is, um, is coordinated through a coordinator, uh, which is uh, usually a Redis server or an ETCD server or what you have to, to handle that. There's a few drivers available. So in this uh, schema, uh, where we're going to plug collect G is exactly at the same uh, place on the other services, which is through the API. So Collect is going to talk to Nuki through its API. The API can be used to read the data, but also to send new metrics. This is exactly, for example, where a pseudometer in a classic OpenStack uh, deployment is going to put its data to. Uh, the quick point about uh, Nuki versus pseudometer, because I know there's a lot of people still confused about uh, the two projects. Uh, it's, it's more about the history in the end. Pseudometer uh, is older. Like I said, five years old. Nuki is only three years old. Um, the, the history of creation of Nuki comes from the fact that Cinometer used to uh, leverage a database such as uh, MongoDB by default, which, were, uh, which was not used in a way that was very scalable. Like there was a lot of data being stored, no aggregation uh, done in advance in the case of Cinometer. So as soon as you would uh, retrieve data from Cinometer, it would take ages to compute an average because you add uh, millions of samples in a single collection of MongoDB or a single table in SQL, for example. So it was pretty, pretty hard to keep a lot of data for a long time. Uh, on large deployment pace, uh, past a week or so, you could have millions of points in Cinometer database and it would just explode and any query would take like 20 minutes to reply, which is not very usable. Um, so this part of uh, Cinometer, which is the old API and storage database has been deprecated last, uh, last cycle, uh, and it should be away anytime in the future. And uh, Nuki is not a new API to use if you want to retrieve data from uh, your OpenStack cloud or feed more into it. So I'll let Emma talk to you about uh, Collect Dish. Okay. I'm, so I'm going to talk to you about what Collecti is, how it's used in OpenStack, and how you can take advantage of this in your own deployments. So first of all, Collecti is a system statistics collection tool. It's quite a mature project. It's over 10 years old. It is a modular plugin-based architecture, which means that you can enable or disable plugins in a veg in independent of each other, which means you can monitor just what you want to monitor. And it's designed to be performant, but also to have a low footprint on your system. So as I said, it's got a plugin-based architecture. And these plugins fall into two main categories, read plugins and write plugins. So the read plugins collect um, system statistics. The write plugins send them off to whatever format you want to consume. To a certain extent, Collecti also supports thresholding and notifications, so you can get events as well as metrics. And Collecti is widely available in most Linux distributions as well. So what kind of information is available from Collecti? Besides saying a lot of information, these are some that might be particularly interesting. In total, Collecti has over 90 plugins. This is just a selection. And each plugin can provide multiple metrics and provide these metrics for multiple resources as well. So for example, taking the CPU plugin, you get eight different metrics 
about your CPU utilization for each individual CPU, and it's similar across other plugins as well. Okay, so how do Collecti and Yaki go together? Collecti generates a lot of metrics, and Yaki um, accepts metrics, and they're created by the Collecti write plugins. Okay, so how is Collecti used in OpenStack? Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different projects that currently use Collecti metrics and how they can, how they use them to enhance their own use cases. So the first one up is OPNFE Doctor. If you haven't heard of that, that's a fault uh, maintenance and management project within OPNFE. They detect faults in your system and fail over for, so that you have continuing service. Uh, what they've used in, from Collecti are actually stuff from the OVS and DPDK plugins, so they're monitoring the state, the link state on their actual physical platform. So that, uh, for example, when the link goes down, you can tell Nova to stop, stop scheduling to a host, but you can also do something like mark the control plane is down as well, which is one of their newer, um, newer features. You can also then fail over to whatever backup you were using so that your customers or your service stays running. So they actually do a really good demo quite often to showcase all the new features where you pull the plug on your, on your board, but the video that's streaming from it keeps going and usually you don't notice any changes. Um, then there's the OpenStack Watcher project, which is infrastructure optimization. It analyzes workloads and determines the efficiency of the workloads and moves them into more efficient locations as well. So they actually have a demo in the Intel booth in the marketplace. If you want to go and see that, they're using RDT, which is Intel Resource Director Technology, to detect when cache utilization is interfering with the workload, so you have one application and then another application starts using all the system resources they detect and fail over in that case. And there's the OpenStack Vitrage project, which actually consumes events. So they are also doing a noisy neighbor, but um, they detect the fault and then they detect actually what's causing the fault. They do root cause analysis. So instead of waiting for everything to fail, the existence of one alarm can be deduced from the existence of a previous alarm, and therefore you can actually solve the problem before it actually becomes an issue. So more generically in OpenStack, you can use AODH or A, which is OpenStack alarming. So you can consume events from Collecti and raise alarms in A, which is similar to what Vitraj does or what Doctor has done as well. So, um, there are two main ways to create events in Collecti. You can do them natively in plugins. So instead of creating a read plugin, you can create a notification plugin. So for example, this can be used to, um, sorry, this can be used to monitor the state of a system. So for example, um, there's a DPDK events plugin available. So it monitors the link status of your DPDK interfaces. So when they go down, you get a notification directly out of Collect D, which can be consumed through A directly. Or you can use, within Collect D, you can use a thresholding plugin, which allows you to set a threshold and raise alarms based on um, arbitrary Collect D metrics. So the limitation behind this one is you can only do thresholding. So if you want to utilize any other kind of alarms that are available in A, you can just consume the Nyaki metrics directly. Okay. Um, so new features. One thing I forgot to mention is actually the OPNFE barometer project, which concerns itself with metrics and events surrounding capacity planning, trending, and the operational status of the NFVI. So they've created a lot of plugins within Collect Deeds to monitor the actual physical infrastructure um, that you're running your workloads and that you're hosting your cloud on. So they're responsible for 
a bunch of these plugins that they planned to package in the OPNFE e-release in a few months. Those include the RDT plugin that I mentioned, improvements to the libvirt plugin, which lets you monitor, sorry, not monitor, it, it lets you get statistics about your hypervisor through the libvirt plugin in Collect D. They're also developing an SNMP write plugin so that you can export metrics from Collect D to legacy fault management and monitoring systems. And also they're planning to package A and Yaki plugins for Collect D as well. So you forward metrics to Gnocchi and raise alarms in A. And one very interesting thing that they're doing as well is supporting dynamic reconfiguration of Collect-D. So at the moment, if you want to change your configuration in Collect-D, that's enable or disable plugins or change the interval, you have to restart the service, which means you're actually losing, losing data. So the alternative here is you enable everything at the start. You guess what you may need to monitor in the future, but that's also not very practical because you also have to store this data as well. So if you're able to dynamically reconfigure Collect-D, so um, update the configuration and push it, you don't have to collect too much data or you don't have to collect more data than you need, but you can also reconfigure it if the time comes. And uh, of course, with Gnocchi, these, there are upcoming stability and performance improvements because it's designed to be scalable and performant and handle a lot of data as well. So um, what, can, what can you do? So this is your call to action. If you want to try this out, you can install Collect-D from any of the package managers. You can download the Collect-D Solometer plugin, which actually... Um, gives you the option to build Collect-D from source as well and test it out to see the latest and greatest plugins. And of course, um, try out Gnocchi as well if you're not already doing it. Or if you're previously using something like Solomoner, you can plug Gnocchi in there as well. Um, I just want to let you know that the examples here do not represent like a monitoring solution, but I wanted to present you with the tools that you could use to build up your own system. And it doesn't have to be for monitoring, billing, rating, prediction, auto scaling, anything that you can do with metrics and use these metrics that weren't previously available. So there's a lot in there. So um, I'm just going to summarize. Nyaki can handle lots and lots of metrics. Collecti generates lots of metrics. There are already a bunch of projects in OpenStack making use of the metrics in Collecti. And the Collect Gnocchi and Collect DA plugins that you get in the action and incorporate these additional platform level statistics into your own environments. So, does anybody have any questions? Hi. Uh, first of all, um, Collect is awesome. I've been using it for years. <laughs> Um, if I'm currently uh, throwing my collect these statistics at um, a, a graphite server, what are the principal advantages that I would get from switching from that to uh, Noki, um, we'll assume with a Ceph backend? Uh, so it's, it's basically the, uh, availability, um, the possibility to store a very large amount of data. Like usually if you use a graphite server, so you don't have any um, load balancing or high availability available because Graphite stores uh, uh, its data into files. So you have to handle files and to store them into something like, uh, I don't know, a big NetApp server or whatever you got, which can be pretty expensive. Whereas if you use Gnocchi, you can just, just like use a, a self cluster and spawn any number of API and metric workers uh, as you please and as you have capacity and that's it. So it's, it's designed in a way that you can't have any uh, single point of failure in your metric system. Follow-on question, if there isn't another one. Um, could I make Gnocchi available to my tenants as yes. well? Yes, so okay. it's designed this way. Like I said, there's, uh, the default is to use a basic HTTP mechanism for authentication, so it's more or less single user. But there's a keystone off mode, uh, which filters uh, the, um, the metrics and the resources into Nuki by project user, whatever you want. So you can use Oslo policy to define uh, RBAC 
rules. Um, like you can use collectd to put the metrics into your key and set the right permissions to expose them to your tenants via an open stack. Thank you. Any other question? So can you use the mic, please, just? Thanks. Uh, is it possible to run collectd inside the VM instead of the infrastructure to collect more data uh, related to the VM? It is. Um, collectd has a network plugin which allows you to forward um, metrics to uh, different collectd servers. So you can run it inside your VM and forward them to your host. They can be aggregated there. Uh, is there any collaboration between the uh, Nuki uh, telemetry uh, project and the Manaska project? Um, you know. We wish, but we're, we're not so far. So uh, it could be, I'm not an expert on Monasca, but it could be that we could use like uh, Nuki to store our metrics. Sure. But uh, I'm not aware of any effort into that direction. I mean, whenever it reach to us for that, so we'd be happy to, to help or whatever, but there's none so far. Thank you. No more question. Thank you. Um,